You know, the Android battles continue, and I've got two awesome devices in my hands that are worthy of going head-to-head. -head. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and in one hand, I have the HTC One X. Now, this thing is available globally, and it's coming soon to AT&T for $299.99 with 4G LTE and some other goodies. Then I have the Samsung Galaxy Note over here, big 5.3-inch display, 8-megapixel camera, and available now on AT&T with 4G LTE connectivity. This thing is available soon, but it has a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3 processor on the global version, a 4.7 inch HD display, and a pretty awesome camera that shoots in burst mode. Which one of these is the ultimate must-have Android device? We're gonna find out in the dogfight, but first, some love to my boys at Best Buy Mobile. Gotta give them a shout out because they hook us up with phones like this for use in our one Paul Bandit game that we turn around and give to you on the site. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, all that good stuff. So when you walk out the door, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. It's just all set up at Best Buy Mobile. They'll make sure you walk out working. Let's take a look at this One X Galaxy Note. Which one's the ultimate must-have Android device of 2012? We'll find out starting right now. So we're not even halfway through 2012 just yet. We've got some awesome Android devices already in the phone dog offices. Two awesome ones right here, the HTC One X and the Samsung Galaxy Note. Now the One X is coming soon to AT&T. It's coming on May 6th for $299.99 and it's packing some kind of revised specs over the international version here. But this is the international version and just to give you a lowdown here, it's packing a 1.5 gigahertz quad core NVIDIA Tegra 3 CPU. So quad core performance. It's got a 4.7 inch QHD display that's true HD. So it has 720p HD display that's 4.7 inches, an 8 megapixel camera on the back with continuous mode where you can shoot pictures as quickly as possible. Burst mode is what I like to call it. A 1080p HD video recording capability. And then of course a 1,800 milliamp hour non-removable battery in the back of this bad boy. Now this is the international version. Like I said, it doesn't support 4G LTE out of the gate. It's got HSPA+, Plus, although the AT&T version, which is coming soon, does have 4G LTE capabilities. But you can really see how thin this device is with your micro USB charging port over here on the left side, your volume rocker over on the right side, your power button and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top. It's nice and curved. It looks great. It fits well in the hand. And you know, it's despite it being a little bit too large for some people, it's borderline for me. You know, I happen to prefer personally the size of the One S a little bit better than the One X. But a little bit on the big side, but perfect for, you know, browsing the web, watching those YouTube videos, listening to music, and doing things like that. Then you have the Samsung Galaxy Note. Now this thing has been out on AT&T for a couple of weeks and it's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S3 CPU. Now the interesting thing here with the S3 CPU, we're seeing some new devices that have come out like the One S with a dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, and the S3 is uh, you know used in the Galaxy Note, used in the, uh, the Skyrocket, used in the Resound, a couple of older Android devices or devices that have been on the market for a little while. And the S3 is notorious for a little bit of lag from time to time. The S4, it's funny because I went into this with the expectation that the S4 was going to be equally laggy from time to time. Huge improvement, night and day. You really can't even compare the processors in the, uh, in the same way. So S3 here, the older version of the Snapdragon in the Galaxy Note. Otherwise, 5.3 inch true HD display. It's a super AMOLED display. It's HD, 1280 pixels. You've got an eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording back here. Our front facing shooter and it's packing Android 2.3 with TouchWiz version 4.0. Now this over here is packing uh, Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich with HTC Sense 4. So you've got a lot of new stuff over here. But the question is, the Galaxy Note obviously has a great value proposition with the S Pen, with some of the functionalities that it has, with the big display, with the tablet computer hybrid thing it's got going on. Which one's the best? Well, that's what the dog fight's for. We're going to find out right now. Volume rocker over here on the left side. You've got your power button in typical Samsung fashion over on the right side. Your micro USB charging port at the bottom, and then your capacitive buttons down here. Now, take a close look at this because you've got menu home back and search here because this is a gingerbread device. On devices that are rolling out, with Ice Cream Sandwich out of the gate, you'll notice immediately that there's a button missing. You have back, you have home, and then you have recent applications where I can easily swipe out just like that and cancel out or close out whatever application it was I just swiped up on. So that's a difference. You don't have any sort of search key here. You do have back and you do have home, but you're going to notice some differences here with both Ice Cream Sandwich and with HTC Sense 4 because it's a dramatic overhaul for HTC. So again, two different form factors here, 2,500 milliamp hour battery here, and this one, because it is on AT&T right now, it supports AT&T's 
4G LTE capabilities. Now, battery life's been pretty decent on the Galaxy Note despite doing that because it's got a big 2,500 milliamp hour battery. I can make it about 12 hours, and we'll talk more about this in part two, but I can make it about 12 hours or 13 hours before the device requires a recharge with moderate use. But let's do kind of an in-depth look here because you've got Sense 4 over here and TouchWiz over here. So we'll come in here and take a look at what's changed in Sense 4. You have seven home screens. We'll scroll through these so you can see back and forth. And you got some great new widgets as well, which we'll get into in just a second. But this quad-core performance, incredibly fast. Like I said, quad-core Tegra 3 processor here. Incredibly speedy. Little to no lag whatsoever. Been really impressed with this. And then you've got, of course, your menu button down here. You've got some shortcuts here. Call, contacts. And of course, you can switch these out as well. So let's say you use contacts. You don't use it that much. You use Play Store a little bit more. So HTC offers a reasonable level of customization here. And out of the gate, you'll see some changes to the menu as well. And you'll see some animation changes. You've got that nice carousel look here. And thanks to that quad-core CPU, nice and smooth with little to no lag. Now, out of the box, this is an unlocked device. So you're not going to get a whole lot of carrier-installed applications. Actually, you're not going to get any carrier-installed applications. What you will see are some uh, things like 7 Digital. You've got, of course, Draw Something. I had to download Draw Something. I mean, come on now. Dropbox, a couple of other things out of the gate. And you'll notice that because it's running Ice Cream Sandwich, you've got Google Plus and Google Plus Messenger out of the box. You've also got PDF Viewer. I downloaded my AT&T, but Polaris Office comes installed along with SoundHound, TuneIn Radio, and then, of course, I uh, downloaded Uverse Mobile as well. You have three static shortcuts up here. Also, Search, Play Store, and then, of course, your menu, because obviously there's no physical menu button on this device. So as you start to go through applications and kind of learn, you'll understand, or you'll notice, rather, that the menu button is in some place in the various applications. It's a software button as opposed to a physical hardware button, and you'll see it in all throughout the applications. When you go in here, for example, to email, you'll see menu down here at the bottom. That does rotate around from time to time, and then there are those times, and forgive me here where I pull this out just to make sure. There are those times where it's kind of frustrating. You can see down here at the bottom of Facebook where you've got just one big menu button and that's all you have and it doesn't really mesh very well with the actual application. So those are still some of those kind of frustrations with Ice Cream Sandwich that some uh, they're hoping that some of the developers will pick up on and uh, and you know, kind of improve that. Then you have Ice Cream Sandwich, or excuse me, uh, Gingerbread over here and kind of similar functionality but you're going to see a little bit of lag. Notice a little bit of uh, a little bit of lag and stutter from time to time. And of course, this is running the S3 chipset and it's got a 1280p display. I mean, this thing is a huge high resolution display and that's definitely taking its toll as well. But that's not to say that this isn't a powerhouse device. It also has seven home screens here and it's packing TouchWiz version 4.0. And on your notifications bar, you've got your shortcuts up there. And then you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, airplane mode, and screen rotation along with that. And then up here you'll notice some different color schemes as a result of this being ice cream sandwich. And I can easily kick into settings and see how it looks in Sense 4 with ice cream sandwich. You've got your shortcuts to all your wireless stuff, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile network, of course, your personal, your phone, and it's all kind of separated. And this is another little animation thing I happen to like a lot. It's a little kind of a stacking thing where you can pull up and when you realize you're down at the bottom, it kind of gives you this little stacking thing. I find myself playing with this more, uh, more often than I probably should, but that's a nice little touch as well. So let's say on both of these devices, you're going to come in and you want to do widgets. Well, we'll come over here to an empty page on the One uh, X and we'll press and hold and it brings up a whole new widget look and feel here. You've got seven home screens. You can easily scroll between those and then you can scroll between all your widgets on the One S, so or One X rather. So you can scroll through here or you can separate them out. Let's say you know you're looking for FM radio, you can click on FM radio and find it there nice and quick. And then you have your search button here as well. Same thing down here, apps and shortcuts. You got more of an old school look and feel here, but this is TouchWiz 4, so it is slightly modified with widgets down here at the bottom. And you got a nice carousel where you can scroll through all the various widgets. Now, TouchWiz 4.0 has always offered customization on the widget front. So we get in here with the digital clock, for example, and we'll come back out. Let's say we want to make that digital clock. Actually, that's not the best example. Let's go back in here and find a better one. Let's go to, let's see. Let's go to find a, let's find a good one here. Let's find, I'm drawing a blank. Let's go to TouchWiz. Let's go to, oh no, AccuWeather. That's a perfect one. So we'll go to AccuWeather here and I can bring this out on the home screen so you can see the weather for Charlotte. And it's hard to do this with two hands, forgive me. But you can see I can customize the actual widget size and make room for extra widgets on the screen. Well, that's always been a TouchWiz 4.0 thing with most of the widgets. Fortunately, you can do that with some of the HTC widgets. And I'm going to double check and see if you can do it with bookmarks. We'll see. Actually, let me go ahead and go back in here. Do this real time on camera so we can test it. 
and I don't know if Bookmarks is a customizable one. It is as well. So you can see HTC Widget's finally customizable. When it gets too small, you'll see the red bars. But otherwise, you can customize. This has been my primary complaint. They probably heard me talk about it as frustrated as I get with the inability to customize widgets. So you've got that ability to do that on uh, HTC Sense version 4. Now let's take a look at the web browser on both of these devices. Load up the internet. We'll go to phonedog.com. We'll go to phonedog there. We'll go to phonedog over here as well. Before we jump into messages on both of these devices and take a look at the keyboards on these respective units. So phonedog loading up on both of these devices. Wait for it to pop up here. And of course HSPA Plus over here. 4G LTE over here. And like I said, the AT&T version will come with HSPA Plus, or excuse me, 4G LTE on the One X. But we've got to wait for that to come. It comes on May 6th in AT&T stores and it will be available for $299.99. So you can see where this one really comes in handy with the big 5.3 inch display. Great for browsing the web because you get a ton of screen real estate. And of course the transition effects are mostly faster and you've got a nice transition effect that kind of throws your eye and makes it seem a little bit slower than it actually is. So you got your pinch to zoom here, bring it all the way in. You can see that HD display really doing a good job here with the text. It looks absolutely beautiful. And I can come down here and I can go up and change and you can see more of a browser style uh, URL bar there with the back and forth buttons here and then of course your open windows and bookmarks as well so I can easily scroll back and forth. Now over here, phonedog.com webpage is not available for some reason. I don't know why it's not loading up on the HTC One X. We'll give this another go but you can see the menu button up here and you've got some interesting shortcuts. You've got your view desktop site. You can enable flash player. You can add to and do bookmarks and you can do tabs as well and scroll back and forth through all the different pages. So phonedog.com loading up apparently over on this end as well. Could be because I have a bunch of pages loading up. That could be the issue. But you can see portrait to landscape relatively fast here with uh, with little to no lag. Let's see if we can get this to load up. Phone Dog's loading up right now and you can see it's taking its sweet time for whatever reason. Uh, HSPA Plus is not really cooperating today, but you can see the header there. And so most for the most part, pinch to zoom, very responsive on this device thanks to that quad core Tegra processor. And you can see transition effects are nice and smooth as well. So in the browser department, Everything looks good. Let's take a look at messaging on both of these devices and forgive me while I pull away here because I do have some text on this device, uh, some personal text from when I uh, slipped my SIM card in to use it for a day and on this one uh, as well. But just to give you an idea, here's what the interface looks like. And again, you can see the ice cream sandwich difference with some of the shortcut buttons up here at the top. Now, one thing I have to give HTC credit for, they've done a great job, is they've actually added stuff below the actual icons. Because for the most part, people are going to realize that the little person is probably contacts. They're going to realize this is a little probably a back button. They're never going to realize that this is a menu button. Three dots, you know, I mean, come on now. And you can see that thanks to uh, HTC, there's text below that. Over here, you don't get that, but then you have a little contacts icon and, of course, attach and send or flipped around on both of these devices. Now, out of the gate with the One X, you only get one keyboard. You get HTC's keyboard, and it's a revised version of the Sense keyboard, specifically for Sense 4, although it does have the trace input option as well. So you can use kind of that swipe functionality with this keyboard, which is good because swipe isn't yet available for ice cream sandwich. So you can see the keyboard here, nice and large, and works pretty well on a 4.3 inch display, the Quick Brown Fox. The Quick Brown KFC, Fox is happy to be around on this fine day. Quick Brown Fox is happy to be around on this fine day. And again, 4.7 inch display gonna be more than large enough for anybody transitioning over for maybe a physical keyboard or something with a smaller display. Now over here, you get a couple of keyboards out of the box. I've installed a couple of these. You get the Samsung keypad, swipe, and then the Android keyboard out of the box. And the Android keyboard is a stock gingerbread keyboard. To me, it looks a little funky on this large display. The little square keys just don't do this display justice, but you do get swipe, and then you get Samsung's keypad as well. Ice Cream Sandwich Keyboard Donation is one that I've installed, and for the most part, I've been relatively pleased with. Now over here, we can say the Quick Brown Fox is happy to be alive. Quick Brown Fox is, of course, is not at all what that says. The Quick Brown Fox is happy to be alive. Samsung's keyboard is not my favorite. But transition effects are nice and fast over here. Again, large 5.3 inch display, great for typing, great for doing anything on the actual display. And of course, you have the S Pen as well, which we'll get into in part two.